welcome to e Shala lecture series in computer science and this is a course in cloud computing. Uh, in this module, we will uh, continue talking about uh, cloud storage. Uh, so, uh, before we come to learning objective, uh, in the last module we discussed about uh, what how the cloud, cloud is uh, providing storage, the cloud service provider how uh, a service provider will be providing storage. As a part of that we give an example, we give a few examples of practical cloud storage. Uh, perhaps the most important cloud storage is being used by uh, the distributed file systems and uh, the most popular of that is uh, a file system called uh, HDFS. In this module, we will talk about HDFS and how or why HDFS is uh, very an integral part of uh, cloud uh, environment. So, our learning objectives today are we will look at the HDFS design goal and we will look at the various components of HDFS, architecture of HDFS, uh, the new features that HDFS have come up with and how to read and write data. Now, uh, data is everywhere, a very large amount of data is available today and uh, therefore, we need to utilize this data. The utilization of the data uh, happens or uh, is done uh, for the purpose of analytics. So, what is an analytics? Analytics helps us to take uh, better decisions and uh, to come up with or to uh, predict a pattern or a behavior which will help us to improve uh, the way we uh, do business or we uh, do whatever mechanism that we follow. Now, uh, it was there before also businesses used to happen based on their past experiences. So, how is it different today? than what used to happen earlier on is what uh, we wonder. So, uh, how it is different today is the vast amount of data that has come. A very large amount of data is available today. We generate data using um, sensors, all our uh, published books, our newspapers, uh, we generate data through our mobile applications many very many our all our social media uh, generate a large amount of data all of these data have to be processed and the data have to be processed very fast the need to uh, do it in a fast manner is what is different today than what used to be earlier on so what do we need to be able to do this is we need uh, machines fast computers which can uh, process this large amount of data. So, what would be a fast computer? A uh, computer which are very large computers which means that we are uh, talking about uh, supercomputers like what is there in CERN and we can use that kind of computers to process a very large amount of data fast and come up with some pattern or some analytics uh, that is helpful for uh, to decide what how the business uh, should behave tomorrow. Uh, but very large machines have their uh, own disadvantages, the first being they are very expensive and not possible for everybody to, to build another CERN just like that. So, uh, we, we ask do, do we really need large machines and uh, if we look at the kind of calculations that we are doing using our large amount of data, we see that the calculations are very simple. They are not uh, very um, complex time consuming calculations. Uh, they are conceptually straightforward and simple calculations. So, uh, where is the complexity then? If the cal calculations are simple, then uh, simple desktops should be able to uh, do that. But the data is so large that a simple desktop computer or a laptop computer is not possible to uh, get the computation done in that. The other part is that we need it in time. Uh, giving a desktop computer uh, to process uh, a terabyte of data, it will 
perhaps if we write the program properly it will process the data and perhaps it will come up with the requisite analytics. But the amount of time it is going to take it will be so large that uh, the analytics uh, will not be applicable or useful to the people. So, timely producing uh, the processing of a very large data um, churning of a very large data to come up with analytics is what is uh, required. Uh, so, if uh, large machines are expensive and their super power in terms of um, complex calculations are not required, then uh, what is our option? Uh, can we really think of a better uh, solution? The solution is to use commodity uh, computers. So, um, commodity computers are the general workstations. Uh, that we see everywhere, they are not very expensive and um, they are available. That is a resource that is easily available and easily procurable uh, if the need is there. So, how many of these machines uh, will be sufficient to churn this terabyte or petabyte of data? We actually need thousands, tens of thousands of such machines to be able to do that. So, we have this kind of machines, we also need uh, a corresponding storage that should be attached to these uh, processors to be able to uh, make the data available as and when they need it. So, storage and processing power and uh, this uh, is uh, this can be done using a commodity machine only when we have a distributed storage system. So, uh, so, tens of thousands of nodes say let us take an example of 10,000 nodes. Let us assume that there are 4 CPUs or uh, 4 CPU node and there are 5 disks per node. Uh, then we have a very large distributed sy uh, system which can store all our data and each of the processors can process a part of the data chunk of the data and we can get the result. But what about failures? what about uh, machines failing all the time. So, if we uh, look at the statistics, Google says that approximately 1.7 percent of the time a uh, commodity machine will fail, uh, which means that given our 10,000 machines, there will be 850 failures uh, per year or, or approximately 2.33 failures per day. So, with this, we need to replace, go around replacing our disks all the time and not only that, the problem of uh, replacing is one part, the other part is the problem of uh, losing the data. The data that will be stored in these disks will be lost and uh, we have to think of replacing that. So, this is a basic problem of using commodity uh, machines. So, therefore, what is required is to uh, obtain a platform or a, or a framework which will take care of these failures. They will do things in the background. So, in the foreground the processing alone will run, in the background the failures should be taken care of and the framework should, should make sure that all the machines are running parallelly and giving ultimately the overall result. The uh, framework that we are talking about is called Hadoop. This is an Apache framework for doing big data analytics. So, let us look at what is Hadoop. Uh, Hadoop is an Apache project actually. Uh, it is an open source uh, Java based distributed computing programming framework and it supports a very large amount of data uh, that can be uh, processed or churned by uh, using only commodity uh, hardware. So, Hadoop has two parts, one is the map reduce uh, where which, which is the processing parallel processing in so many uh, commodity uh, hardware and the other part is the HDFS which is the distributed file system which is called Hadoop distributed file system and that will uh, store the data, hold the data for the map reduce to continue. Uh, typically, it is a cluster based uh, system. Uh, as we will see later, we can do it in a single system also, but uh, it works the best, the most efficiently if we have a, 
uh, cluster in, uh, in place and it can handle this amount of unstructured data. Hadoop can handle both structured and unstructured data that is another uh, importance of uh, having Hadoop using all commodity computers. Uh, so, if we have very large commodity computers, Hadoop will uh, expect the computers to be arranged in racks and uh, it will uh, provide a fault tolerant, uh, always available and scalable framework in which analytics can be performed. Now, why, uh, why Hadoop in cloud? This is a big data analytics mechanism. Why are we discussing in cloud? Uh, there are two things that can happen in a cloud. One is the service provider, the cloud service provider or CSPs may need to uh, implement Hadoop as a background process using which they will deliver um, some service. If we take Amazon's uh, EMR, uh, which is uh, which is the map reduce program of Amazon. It uses uh, it implements Hadoop in the background and will uh, provide the uh, Hadoop based mechanism. It has its uh, computers uh, computing in EC2 and its storage in S3. Uh, the other way of looking at Hadoop is offer Hadoop as a service. So I if a user gives their programs. We the cloud service provider will run it in a Hadoop based in a cloud based cluster of uh, computers. So, what is the benefit of taking Hadoop as a service? It is very uh, apparent how the benefit works. Uh, essentially, it is a big data uh, analytics which requires large processing, uh, many number of machines are required and uh, it it should be able to turn a large amount of data set which should be uh, made available. Now, the elasticity of Hadoop programs is very large. It may, it may have a very large amount of data at some point in time and less amount of data at another point in time. So, we need an elastic system and if we are running Hadoop in our uh, in an organization, then it is not always possible to provide 10 more systems or 20 more systems at a uh, quick notice, which is easily available in a, uh, a cloud environment. So, uh, that is why Hadoop is very much implementable in a cloud environment. Um, in this module, we are not concerned about how the computing part works, because that largely is the uh, taken care of by the user's program and the framework. We will look at how HDFS um, is uh, made to sit in a, a cloud environment. So, what is HDFS? It is the Hadoop distributed uh, file system. It is a Java based uh, program which follows basically Google file system uh, structure and uh, the large data can be uh, stored. Basically, what is done in Hadoop is to split data into smaller blocks and uh, these uh, blocks will be distributed across all the machines in, in a cluster. So, uh, the blocks will be replicated for fault tolerance. The, the premise where we started this module is that there will be failures. The failures continue to happen, these are still commodity so, uh, hardware. So, how Hadoop handles the failure is they have they inject a large amount of redundancy into uh, the system. So, the each block of data is uh, replicated multiple times. Uh, Hadoop default mechanism is to replicate three times, but uh, based on the requirement it can be less or more. Uh, these replicas will be stored in different nodes. Why different nodes? Because uh, if one node fails, still the other node will be uh, having the data and therefore, thereby Hadoop ensures that it is a fault tolerant uh, framework. So, uh, what is the HDFS uh, design goal uh, are these that uh, it is a very large uh, distributed file system, uh, huge number of nodes, huge number of files can be uh, maintained there. And the philosophy behind Hadoop is that uh, data movement is more costly, but uh, computation movement is less costly. So, data will be stored based on the HDFS, it will store the data and 
the computation will be uh, taken from one place to the other where to a node where the data exists as far as possible that is uh, how Hadoop uh, works. Uh, it is a master slave design uh, which means that there is a master node and there are there will be worker nodes uh, and master node will control the uh, worker modes uh, worker nodes and uh, it is a simple coherency model. The Hadoop does not work for all kinds of programs, it works uh, well for uh, applications where uh, there are less number of writes and more number of reads. So, um, it expects that there will be uh, once the data is written there would not be too many updates of the data, but there will be many reads and reading the data is what essentially is supported in Hadoop. So, what are the components of Hadoop? Oh, one component is called the name node and then there are data nodes and the secondary node, secondary name node. The name node is the master, it controls the working of the uh, data nodes and data nodes are the workers uh, which actually do the, which would do the uh, essential work. So, uh, replication uh, is the major uh, magic of uh, Hadoop. Uh, so, all the blocks of the file will be, uh, all the files will be uh, divided into equal uh, sized chunks. Typically, it is 128 MB, but it can be uh, programmed according to the requirement. And the default replica placement strategy is one replica where the data has been submitted that is the local node. Another replica in a rack away from this data, not from in this rack, it is in another rack and a third replica in the remote rack. So, one in a node in a local node in the current rack, another in another rack, another date one data node and the third is in that same rack in a third node. The idea uh, behind this is that if this local data node fails, then uh, the other rack's node will be uh, working. If the rack fails, then also the other rack will be working. What is the replication policy? The replication policy works like this. So, this is our uh, name node and uh, these are the uh, racks and the white ones are the data nodes. So, uh, we have one name node and there are four racks in this example and total Eight, uh, 16 uh, data nodes are there, these data nodes are inside the rack. Now, uh, when uh, the, the some name node con contains uh, metadata, metadata uh, which is a data about data and it stores uh, all the block information and the replica information and where each of the replicas are stored in the data nodes that o complete information is stored with the name node. So, here in this example we see that the name node is storing this information file name, the number of replications and the block IDs of the file, how many block IDs are there in that file. Uh, it stores this metadata the name node and uh, this is an example where we should see that first uh, there is a, a path given for file 1 and the replication is there are three replications and uh, three replication for each block and there are two blocks block number 1 and 3. So, if I we assume that the local node is uh, say 1 then uh, block 1 will be put in uh, node 1 and the other replication of block 1 will be away from this rack. So, it, it can be put in rack 2 node number 6 and rack uh, to node number 7. Similarly, uh, uh, block 3 will be perhaps put in rack 2 in node number 5 and uh, other 2 replicas in another rack. Uh, in another example file 2 it has 3 uh, blocks 2, 4 and 5 and uh, it will be again uh, put accordingly one in one local node uh, rack and the other to in the uh, remote rack. So, uh, this is the replication policy uh, following which Hadoop uh, maintains fault tolerance, uh, HDFS maintains fault tolerance. Now, uh, let us look at the architecture 
uh, what happens in the Hadoop architecture. This is the uh, HDFS architecture, this is the name node and these are all the uh, data nodes. Uh, now, uh, the secondary name node, the work of the secondary name node is uh, to ensure checkpointing. We have learned in our during our uh, theory uh, part that checkpointing is a very important uh, requirement of a distributed environment and hence of cloud. So, uh, how do HDFS employs uh, checkpointing with the help of a secondary name node and therefore, it, uh, it tries to safeguard the uh, name node failure. So, uh, both the name node and the data nodes will be part of the cluster management and if when a client wants to ask for a, a file, wants to read a file, now the file is split into blocks and these blocks are only known to the name node in the metadata. So, it will ask the name node uh, where these blocks are there and which data nodes contain these. The, that block ID and the data node information will be sent back to the client and then client will contact the data nodes directly and they will uh, get the data. So, they will get the chunks, the blocks and combining these blocks, they will obtain the overall file. So, uh, the problem is in the uh, name node, the metadata that it contains uh, has to be maintained by the uh, name node completely. The namespace uh, is a hierarchical uh, file and directory environment and uh, the metadata that it contains will be the list of files, the blocks for each of the files because name node splits the uh, data file into blocks and the which data node contains which blocks, how many replications and the file attributes, the creation time, the replication factor uh, etcetera. It further maintains a transaction log to ensure fault tolerance and this is the record of how many, what the files created, what the, uh, what, what have been deleted, how have been uh, updated etcetera. So, uh, name node metadata it is stored in two types of files, one is called the FS image and the other is called the edit s. FS image is the overall state of the whole name node at any point in time. It is essentially as the name suggests, it is a snapshot of the whole system. As we have learned earlier on that snapshotting is a, is a, is a way of storing uh, date, uh, information, but uh, it does not contain any data. It contains the current state of the name node environment and uh, edit s is a log file which logs all the transactions. Using these two name node and the secondary name node ensure that there is fault tolerance in HDFS environment. So, in case the name node crashes, then the file system cannot be used because all the uh, information about the file, how many blocks, where the blocks are, how, in what way the blocks should be uh, connected, all these would be uh, gone with the, if the name node fails. So, what is the, uh, it is very important to ensure that name node is safe, uh, it is not, not uh, we should not allow name node to fail, but it is also a commodity hardware and it will fail. So, uh, how to ensure that, uh, how do I, how do we handle uh, name node failure? That is where our secondary name node comes in. The secondary name node uh, will be, will be running in the background and it will be monitoring and storing. It will create a, a necessary backup. So, it will take the snapshot and it will create uh, the uh, new uh, uh, snapshot of the environment. Uh, let us look at how uh, this happens. So, this is our primary name node and this is our secondary name node. Uh, the primary name node has two components edit s and f s image. So, uh, some, some snapshot has been taken in f s image and from next uh, interaction onwards the edit s is storing the, the log file of what are the interactions that is happening. Now, when uh, a time comes for the secondary name node to interfere, uh, the primary name node starts a new 
editors. So, editors uh, the earlier editors contains up to a certain point, FS image contains even before that the overall snapshot and the primary name node starts a new editors which is called editors new. After this has been started the FS image and the editors is sent to the uh, secondary name node. So, secondary name, name node receives these two and what the secondary name node does is ap it applies the editors transactions to the FS image to create an up to date FS image which is called the FS image checkpoint. This is the FS complete FS image of combining these two. So, whatever has happened till before this particular log has started will be present in the checkpoint uh, FS image checkpoint and then it will uh, send the new uh, FS image uh, checkpoint back to uh, primary name node. Now, primary name node will uh, ha now it has the uh, uh, new FS image and it converts the edit as new to the current ADS and edit, edit as and FS image checkpoint to the current FS image and it starts re continues um, normally. If we see how the HDFS is working, there are two layers uh, using which HDFS works. Uh, the, the na this is the name node, these are the data nodes. The first layer is the namespace. A very important part of the uh, of the name node is to ensure the correctness of namespace. So that that's the first layer that Hadoop works with. The second layer is the block uh, storage management. In that we have a block management part which is done by the name node. So, here are the uh, work for this block management, it will uh, give the data nodes the cluster membership, it will support uh, all these uh, block creation of all the block level operation and will manage the replica manage replica replication and replica placement and the storage which will physically take care of the reads and writes because they contain the data. The data nodes contain the actual data, name node is just uh, having the metadata. Unfortunately, HDFS is not a, a perfect uh, environment uh, where it, uh, it has its own limitations, uh, very poor performance, isolation is poor because there is only one namespace, name node does not have high availability and uh, therefore, it causes a single point of failure and it always needs it needs the secondary name node to uh, there are two new features uh, one is called the name node high availability and the other is called the uh, HDFS federation. Uh, the high availability is where we have an active and a standby name node. So, there are two name nodes and the data nodes as usual there are uh, multiple data nodes and when the data node reports the block uh, uh, level information it reports to both the name uh, both the name nodes and uh, the uh, sec the primary name node active name node will uh, create the editors and fs image and the second uh, the uh, standby name node will use that to ensure that it is always available so uh, whenever there is a uh, there is a problem with uh, the active name node the uh, standby name node immediately takes over. This is a feature that has been incorporated in the new uh, recent uh, version of uh, Hadoop called yet another resource negotiator. HDFS federation works like this when there are so many data nodes having so many blocks. Uh, it runs multiple name nodes and each of these name nodes has a block pool some um, uh, blocks from each of the data nodes will be pulled for one. So, each name node will run a separate namespace and these namespace will contain blocks from uh, a subset of the data nodes or all the data nodes. Uh, this way what will happen is the, the name node uh, namespace will be isolated. Therefore, if we want to run a specific kind of uh, applications we can have an isolated namespace. What is the benefit of federation? Federation is the namespace scalability because it is there are so many name nodes. So, therefore, horizontal scalability is there, performance is improved and 
of course, isolation is obtained. So, we will take a quick look at the read anatomy of the uh, file of uh, HDFS system, how the data flows. This is the client, the client also contains the, uh, the two other modules which helps it to obtain the data. So, first the block information is obtained and uh, then when the block information is obtained by the client, it uh, uses uh, the um, FS data input stream to uh, contact the corresponding data nodes and obtain the uh, data. In case of write, which is the maybe the first time it is writing, uh, it will uh, have the write information, it will send the uh, write information to the uh, name node to create the blocks and then it will send the data. The data is uh, written in a, a pipeline manner. So, the data node will have this data and then it will pass on to the next data node and that data node will pass on to the third data node. So, uh, this is how a write will happen in a uh, HDFS. Uh, all the uh, upcoming uh, and large environments use Hadoop in a cloud to ensure data availability. To uh, summarize uh, this particular module, uh, we looked at why Hadoop and uh, data analytics, big data analytics is required and then we justified why uh, it is uh, being done in cloud. Uh, we looked at the uh, specific storage mechanism called Hadoop distributed file system uh, and we also justified why HDFS should be hosted in a cloud and we looked at the architecture and the components of uh, HDFS. Uh, we uh, looked at the new features which is the name node high availability and the HDFS federation. In the next class, we will uh, look at the NoSQL uh, data store. These are our references. Thank you.